Michael Lancelotti is an artist from Wayne, New Jersey. He combines various forms of media to create his vision. He's created oil paintings, sculptures, and moss portraits. His work is showcased in galleries including the National Arts Club, and he won numerous awards for many of his pieces. He never sticks to one aesthetic and constantly creates different themes for his creations. His existence is art. He lives to create. His passion lies between the art and the message he is trying to send. His art questions the hypocrisy in our day-to-day -day life and makes people think outside the box. A free identity is what allows him to have no barriers when it comes to creating. And in his own words, craft is nothing but a Trojan horse. Let's take a deeper dive into Lancelotti's art. Hello and welcome to Garden State of the Arts. I'm your host, Cece Bernstein. Today with us, we have Michael Lancelotti. How are you doing, Michael? I'm very good. Thank you, Cece, and thank you for having me this thank afternoon. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. So you've been creating art for quite a while. What, what made you pursue it in the first place? Well, actually, I could give you a, a definitive answer to that. Um, I would say that I started pursuing art the day I was kicked out of art class at the end of my junior year in high school. And uh, that sounds ironic, but um, up until that point, I had taken art as a goof, just a, a filler class to just relax whenever. And I had the same art teacher for th three years, um, and he was a very mellow person, and I was the class clown. And eventually, even though he had a lot of patience, he, uh, I brought him to the level of frustration where about a month and a half left of the June, my junior year in high school, he kicked me out of his class. Now, I tried to get transferred into another class um, because I needed the credits to move on to my senior year in high school. Uh, but unfortunately, there was nowhere for me to go. So begrudgingly, um, I went back to his class, um, upset with him and him being upset with me. I decided just to shut my mouth and sit in the back and w with a puss on and do my final, <laughs> do my final project. And, and so I'm working on this piece for the, uh, my final project, and I was looking at it, and I was trying to get like, proud of it. So here, I, I'm, I'm kind of taken seriously out of the situation, just because I was kind of being a jerk, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm working on this piece, and, and um, when I was getting towards the end of it, a few days left in school, I, I, he, uh, we had not said a word to each other. I hear him walk up behind me, and uh, he says, Michael, he just goes, hmm. And I looked up at him, and I said, that's pretty good, isn't it? And then after that, he, um, he actually, I had him for four classes uh, the next year, and he actually applied to school for me. He filled out my application oh, wow. and uh, sent in my work and got me an a, a interview at School of Visual Arts, in which I eventually went to, to college wow, in, that's, in New York City. Wow, that's an incredible and ironic story. Yes, yes. Um, So when you're making art, what do you prioritize first? Do you prioritize the concept or the aesthetic? Um, well, aesthetic has its place because that's what brings viewers into the image itself. Um, but I have this philosophy where the, the craft is basically the Trojan horse for the artistic concept. So keeping that in mind, I, I created something called conceptual glazing. Um, so conceptual glazing is kind of like um, using the tenets of conceptual art, but um, uh, using the, the skill or craft of the uh, to traditional painting of the old school masters like glazing. So it's basically taking those two schools of thought and, and marrying them together. And um, so I would say concept is much more important, but you need the aesthetic to kind of give it societal validity. So the better the craft, the more societal validity an image would get. And so people who may not be into the art world would at least look at something and say, wow, that's really well done. Mm -hmm. Why did they take the time to paint it to that level? Um, then maybe you would open them up to the concept. So when you're creating these concepts, what is, what is your method to work it out? Um, a lot of times I just take, uh, I just take something like um, my stream of consciousness or something that's going on in current society. And, and uh, like for instance, uh, during 9-11, um, uh, although what the 9-11 terrorists did was is absolutely horrible. It was, it was, it was a terrible day. Uh, um, I had to think like how could people 
how could there be people, people out there sympathize to their, to their causes? And I started thinking about um, what I would consider modern day Greek mythology is kind of the Star Wars world. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at Luke Skywalker, I had done a painting called The Hero of Relativity, which is basically a portrait of Luke Skywalker, and it says intergalactic terrorist. It's a hero of relativity. And if you think about it this way, Luke Skywalker was a disenfranchised farm boy who, who was, uh, took up spiritual guidance from a uh, bearded, robed, cave-dwelling hermit, and he... Um, uh, to take on the, the, the evil empire, say, the power of the evil empire. And from that perspective, if you look at it that way, it's exactly what the 9-11 terrorists did. So it's the biased guys and the storytellers. So it's just to take stuff that's already thought in society one way and kind of turn it on its head, take a cliche and make it fresh. Yeah, that's a very interesting take on, on art and concept. So we've seen a little bit of your art so let's talk about what you're working on now we have a little bit of clips coming up right yeah well um so going to the school that i went to school of visual arts which i mentioned earlier is very competitive and it kind of t took the t it made painting a chore in a sense uh, you know taking so much time and so well, before I learned how to paint, I used to do these little uh, doodles, which is kind of what you're seeing now. Um, basically, it was just a one-line drawing. It would start at one point, and I would do a, a kind of a contour line and fill up the whole entire page. Um, and I always enjoyed doing that. But then I learned how to technical paint, and it became like a chore, and, and it was craft, and, and everything took over. Um, and so I haven't enjoyed painting like I used to enjoy it. So during the quarantine, I decided to take my doodles as a, as a kid, and try to make them a, um, a cohesive image, try to create an actual you know, image out of those instead of just being abstract. And so I was working on that, and now I'm developing a whole new style, which I would say is kind of like an homage to Keith Haring and H.R. Geiger, um, two of my favorite 80s painters um, mm -hmm. or artists. And I'm trying to marry everything that I've done from all my technical skill to my kind of enjoying it as, uh, as an ignoramus, if you will, um, and try to marry them together in a cohesive style where to get back to where a place where I could actually enjoy painting again um, and still try to keep the concept and the technical skill and the enjoyment of it all together in one place. So it's a new style that I'm working on and I'm, I'm currently making progress, but there's still, when you're creating a new style for yourself, there's still, I guess, still, uh, still a little ways to go. Well, I think you're doing great. All your art's so beautiful, and each piece, I could tell, has an uh, intricate message. So as an artist, what's your overall objective? Well, I realize that as an artist, and, you know, being a student of art history, not so much work, more the you know, motivations of artists, I really try not to follow that. Um, I realize that everything has been done. So, for instance, like storytelling, right? There's only eight stories that someone could tell, man versus man, man versus nature, and so forth. There's only 12 notes that someone could play. So there's only so many, even though there's probably a, a wider variety of images that could be created uh, overall, there's still a finite amount. So realizing that everything's pretty much been done, I try to build upon what's already been done as an homage or... Um, to further the lineage of thought and to add to the overall stream of consciousness of mankind. So even if something anonymous, even if it's just one little image or one thing I say or something that's left behind where it builds on that stream of consciousness of the evolution you know, of mankind, um, like, uh, for instance, okay, <laughs> the, the, the Happy Birthday song, right? Everybody knows the Happy Birthday song, but could you tell me who wrote that song? No, no I exactly. <laughs> so I would be pleased with that or, uh, you know, leaving that little tidbit to, for, for my, the lineage of thought to be built upon. Um, even or an homage like um, Magritte did a painting called This Is Not a Pipe, and it's just a painting of a pipe. But he was the first one to say, people, you're looking at a painting. You're not looking at a pipe. But when people viewed it before that, they would say, that's a pipe. And he said, this is not a pipe. <laughs> so I had done a painting that has to do with um, cloning. Uh, it's called A Reproduction, This Is Not a Print. It's a painting of a reproduction. It's actually a painting of an artificial insemination. So it's a painting of a reproduction, not a reproduction of a painting. And that goes into um, the soul. And, and uh, for instance, I did it on uh, cement fiberboard, but it looks like wood, right? So it, it has a print of wood in it, but it's not. It's more durable than wood, but it'll never have the luminosity of wood. So basically it... Um, it's saying, like, no matter how many times you clone my DNA, I could, you'll never create the same person through, without experience. So 
without the experiences that person went through. So that's an homage on Magritte. So it's either going to be something, a, a turn a cliche or a previous kind of um, thought, the, you know, that mankind holds as a, as, a, as, a, as a cliche or building upon what has been done overtly, unapologetically building upon what has been done, almost derivative mm -hmm. of what's been done. Because I realize that um, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I just have to kind of change people's minds a little bit. Yeah, that's so interesting. Honestly, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your story. Thank you for tuning in to, to Garden State of the Arts, and tune in next week to see our next guest.